Hi, this is Colleen, and I'm going to show you how to use FieldWire for common general contractor workflows. In this video, I'll show you how GCs use FieldWire to track quality control. So let's get to it. We're going to use a combination of tasks and forms here, but you're welcome to use one or the other. Let's start by utilizing a task. So as you all probably experience every day, we have many inspections that need to happen on site. Tasks are gonna give us a more informal way to track these inspections, whereas forms are gonna be a little bit more formal and give us a really nice output that we can distribute to external parties. Let's start by creating the task. If I have a concrete pour coming up, I'm gonna track it from right within my task. So I'm gonna call this concrete pre-pour inspection. I can set a status here. If I wanna make it priority one, I can do that. I'll probably just leave this at priority two for now. Then I can throw it in a category. These are totally customizable. I have them set up as the trades right now because I find that to be the easiest way to report on it uh, for my particular use case as a general contractor. And really, it just allows me to filter my tasks later on. I'm going to come over here and now add a checklist. I can add individual checklist items if this is a one-off scenario. But because I do these concrete pre-pour inspections over and over again throughout my project, I've actually created a checklist template that allows me to use it over and over again. And that way, I have a standardized process so I can see which items in this inspection are consistently failing across this project as well as across all of the projects on field. Wire. I'm going to assign this to my superintendent, Dan, or my quality manager, Dan, out in the fields so that he can take care of completing this task. So let's jump over to Dan's iPad and take a look at what it looks like on his end. So you can see that Dan has received this task with the checklist and all of the other information that I've entered into it. He can see the changes that I've made because they're all logged in the messages section here, and he can start to go through this inspection. He can check off the boxes of the things that are complete, base looks good, but maybe he gets to the rebar and sees that it is not installed per the design. So he taps the checkbox twice to mark it as non-conforming. If one of these items was not applicable, he could tap it three times uh, to let the team know that it not, doesn't apply here. Then maybe Dan comes down to the bottom of the task here and snaps a photo of the rebar. Don't have any exposed rebar in my work from home situation here, but you get the gist. <laughs> he can tap into that photo and mark it up to give more context. He can also communicate back to the team in the office to let them know that there's an issue here. He can type it out as you normally would on your phone or your tablet, or he can utilize talk to text. The rebar wasn't installed per the design here. Saves him a bunch of time as he's running around on site. Another thing that he can add here for more context is the rebar submittal itself. So he's already uploaded it into the file section. So we'll just attach the PDF here where he can then open it up, view it, search for text and mark it up if he needs to. So then the office team gets this task, gets the information with the photo and everything, and they'll communicate back and forth. So what they can do, and you can do this from your mobile device as well, is they can attach a specific form for rebar quality control because we want to formalize this process. You can see all of Dan's information has just pushed from my iPad because I have a good Wi-Fi connection now. <laughs> so we can add a new form to fill out or an existing form. Just for the sake of time, I've already filled out some of the form that we're going to use today. FieldWire's forms are totally customizable, so we do offer you six templates out of the box, but you can also build your own forms from scratch. Let's take a look at what this rebar QC inspection form looks like. I have my description up at the top where I can add whatever information is applicable. 
We can even customize the status. So here I've decided to go with not started in progress, complete and compliant. I can then assign this out to Dan so that he can now fill it out and he can get the push notification that tells him that it's assigned to him. I'll update the day to be today. And you can see I have different field types here, like plans that show me all of the plans on my project. I have short text fields for my spec reference, attachments where I can add files and or photos, and then more short text as well as user fields, which is going to be all of the people who are on the project. I can even add a weather section here, which pulls from both the date as well as the address that I've entered in the project settings. So now Dan can start to fill this out on mobile. Jumping over to the forms tab here. I can collapse all of my folders to quickly get to this rebar inspection form. I can access it directly from the task as well as soon as it syncs. So I'll start to mark this as in progress as Dan starts to work on it. He can add more information in the description section here, which is long text. He can view more details about the weather in each of these rows. And then just like in the task, he can start to mark off these checkboxes. What's different about the form checkboxes here is that this is actually a checkbox and note section. So if he has specific items that he needs to enter or give more context, Dan can enter more information here by typing or using talk to text. Just like in the task, he can tap it twice to mark it with an X or three times if it's not applicable. Once he marks them all off and gives more context in the notes section, he'll want his third party inspector to sign as well as himself as the internal QA QC person. So the third party inspector doesn't have a field wire login, but that's okay because we can actually have him come and sign on Dan's iPad. We'll add a signature and select someone else. Our third party inspector, Jane is going to sign and then she can do her freehand signature right on the form. This gives us the context of who signed exactly when and from whose device they signed so we can always trace these signatures back to their root. Then once it's done, Dan can come in or me, <laughs> sign as myself and move right along. Let's take a look at how we can submit this form. So as you can see, there's a little red asterisk next to both of these signatures, which means that these are required to be filled out before we can submit the form. Because those are filled out, I can mark it as complete and compliant. And now this form is locked and no edits can be made to the form unless an admin takes it out of that state. If I wanna export this form, I can hit the export button in the top right corner here and take a look at what it'll look like in PDF format. You can see my company logo has been added at the top here with all of my project information. Even the uh, attachment section are live links so that anybody that receives this PDF can access that information. And it gives me just a nice formal looking PDF that I can distribute to any internal or external parties. I can save that to my mobile device and email it out, or I can email it out directly from the form section on web. You can come to my forms, again, collapse some of my folders, and then I can just click this envelope here and email it out directly. I can enter in anybody's email address, no matter if they're on Fieldwire or not. And then I can decide if I want to send it as a PDF or as a CSV. You can also export the CSV of multiple forms at once so that you can track trends over time. You can enter in your own subject line as well as your own message and choose whether or not you want to CC yourself on the email. They'll receive whatever you chose, either the PDF or the CSV in their email shortly after. We can also go back to this task here, and I'm going to add 
a tag onto this called QAQC. Hashtags are a great way to indicate types of tasks so that you can indicate across all of your categories, whether it's a QAQC item, maybe it's just a general to do or an administrative item, or maybe it's a punch list item. So now I want to report on all of my QAQC tasks. So I'll generate a report, create new report, and call it QAQC. I'll check the box here. I'll make this a detailed PDF, include my start and end date, cost manpower, any files, and a table of contents. I'll do all of my statuses, and then I'll just filter down to my QAQC tag. I can send it now or schedule it to go out on a weekly or a monthly basis. So maybe I have a QAQC senior manager who manages a bunch of projects and needs to get this report on a weekly basis. They can see all of the QAQC items on this form, or I can set up these to go out to my specific subcontractors by filtering down to the trade, which is also my category. If I want to just look at it on a one-off scenario, I can also just download it directly to my browser and view it before I send it off if I want to preview it as well. It'll have my logo, just like you saw on the form, and it'll also have all of the project information that I need. You can see here, I've just filtered down to my QAQC tag. I have my table of contents of the task that I just created, and then I have all the information in the task, the checklist, the messages, the submittal that I attached, as well as the photo and even the form up here. That was the general overview of how to use FieldWire to track quality. Please let us know if you have any questions or need any assistance. Thanks.